Thank you uh, for having me, PopTech. Thank you, everyone, for uh, being here today. So uh, my name is Duff McDonald, as you can see. I'm the author of, uh, if you haven't heard of my book, uh, or even if you have and if you're reading it, you're probably not done yet because it's 600 pages. Um, uh, as Esther was saying earlier, if you look at the subtitle, I was not beating around the bush about what I thought with this book. It is, uh, it is a um, gentle criticism of the uh, Harvard Business School and by extension the, uh, what I call the MBA industrial complex for a failure to uh, live up to its self-imposed mandate. Uh, not what I would have them do or what we would have them do, but what they said they were going to do, which was to educate an enlightened managerial elite. Uh, can we, our, our morals and capitalism it is, as it is currently practiced in the United States incompatible? And I have a thing in my notes here that says pause for laughter. Uh, uh, the, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that they're not, but it's not common. Valiant's a great example. There's an accounting fraud at that company, but if you set it aside, it's, uh, it was a company run by ex-McKinsey types. Uh, it was a financial play, a pure play roll-up. Uh, where one of the largest investors was Bill Ackman, uh, HBS graduate himself and hedge fund manager who uh, sees agitating for short-term gains at, at the expense of long-term anything uh, as somehow being akin to being an instrument of the Lord. And that is not what we mean by morals in capitalism. Uh, the, the, the question is really though, can we have a higher purpose uh, in business and how do we bring people back to a higher purpose? Uh, one way that we can do that is we can talk about it. Uh, my co-presenter, Mihir Desai, um, uh, Mihir Desai has a, a, a book out now called The Wisdom of Finance. It's fantastic. Uh, I talk about it, too, at great length in my own book. But, you know, talk is cheap, and uh, at the end of the day, we've been talking about this stuff for a long time, and, and, and nothing's really changed. Um, and the reason for that, I think, is because it's not about what people say. It's about what people do. And... Um, it's what they're taught to do, and it's what we ask of them. And so you will not find on Valiant's P&L an estimate of the social cost uh, to ill patients of jacking up prices of drugs. We don't ask them to calculate that, so they don't care about that cost. Um, and while I was working on my own book, I, I came across the work of a, a management professor named Thomas Johnson. And he spent the latter half of his career uh, working on what he, what he thought of as the manager's separation from the nature of his work. And uh, it brought to mind for me, uh, uh, how many of you have seen the 1982 movie Koyaanisqatsi? Beautiful documentary, right? Startlingly beautiful documentary, uh, sort of of the BBC Earth genre. And it was about man's separation from nature. But what Thomas Johnson is talking about is the manager's separation from the nature of his work. And I think that a lot of that comes from how we teach our managers today uh, and, and that we have told them that it's acceptable to, uh, to deal in abstractions, right? So uh, the modern manager thinks that uh, financial statements are a company, are a true reflection of reality. Uh, and while they're a useful shorthand, obviously they are not. The map is not the territory. And the problem that we run into is that uh, we, we ultimately have said to them, here's your map. Here's, here's how you need to chart your way through this. In popular vernacular, right, the bottom line, what does that mean? It means what's your point? What's the point? If someone just says to you, what's the bottom line? Uh, uh, in a P&L, as we all know, the bottom line is earnings per share. And that's gap accounting in the US. So ergo, our bottom line, we have decided as a culture and, and uh, uh, in, the, in management uh, schools is earnings per share. What is earnings per share? Anyone who's dealt with accounting knows that. 
What, is it a reflection of something that actually happened? Is it a reflection of potential? Not really, and it gets really distorted if you include write downs and whatnot. So it's essentially an abstraction in the middle of a sea of abstraction. It's a, a made up number representing nothing, right? And it is, and yet we have decided it is the law. And uh, by that I mean common law, man made law. It's not something like hard sciences or, or physical law. It is a uh, um, decision that we've made to focus on that, and it's something that we can change. Uh, the criticisms of my book have come in two parts. One is the tone is a little aggressive, and two is you don't offer any solutions. You're all criticism. And the tone, I don't apologize for. Somebody needed to shake these people by their lapels. Uh, the, um, the solutions, uh, my, my personal opinion is that's not my job, that's yours. I'm just telling you, uh, educators, that you're not doing what you said you were doing. However, I came here with a solution today. So, and it's a very, very simple one. It's about how we think about things, right? So most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with something like this, right? Our, your standard P&L. Profit on the one side, how do we calculate that? Revenue minus cost. In a shareholder-centric model, which is the one we live in, profit is seen as profit to shareholders. What is that? That's capital income plus whatever your retained earnings are uh, after revenue minus cost of your materials. In uh, modern American society, employees are considered a cost, not an asset and not a benefit. We don't look at the benefit to employees. And that's why a manager can engage in layoffs without a twinge of guilt, because they are reducing costs. How many of them have, how many of us have heard or said, my employees are my greatest asset, right? Not according to gap accounting, they're not. According to gap accounting, they are a cost and they are a negative in the way we run a business. How can we rethink that? Well, we could Think of a company as if it were run for the benefit of employees. That's socialism. I would never suggest that in North America. But it just gives you an idea of all this is is algebra, right? But what if we could think about a company, the bottom line, what is our collective bottom line? What if we said, Companies should be run for the benefit of all involved. Here, you look at the shareholders, employees, you don't see them at, at odds with each other, although ultimately there would, they would be negotiating over the divvying of the spoils. But that's a simple way of thinking about a company that our business schools don't teach our managers to do, we don't ask them to do it in our accounting rules. I met uh, a, an attendee here at the lunch yesterday, Bill Benson, a guy from a, company, a steel company called Worthington Industries. And I said to him, am I out of my mind? Like, is it really that hard to do? And he said, no, we have profit sharing. One third to capital, one third to employees, one third to retained earnings. And I said, is everybody happier there? Because I hope they are, because that's my whole thesis. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> He said, yes, they are, and, it's a, and he said it's a different company for the mere fact that they look at their bottom line, their collective bottom line like this. Uh, I, I'll close up by saying I can't really take credit for this idea. I, I came across it in a book called The Divine Right of Capital, which was written in 2001 by a woman named Marjorie Kelly, and that's, this is like the simplest of the calculations she throws up. Anyone who wants to think about a new way to think about a company and what, why we do the things we do, uh, I, I suggest you read it and because it was very eye-opening to me. And ultimately the point is, it's not about how much we do or how much more we did last year versus this year. It's really about why we do what we do. Which brings me to uh, Mehir Desai. His book is also fantastic, but I'll let him tell you about it. Thanks very much.